Let us cross to the heart of the nation, hidden away there in the wilds of Western Victoria, where Tim Blair does his blogging to the nation and he's writing for the Daily Telegraph. Good to talk to you again, Tim. I loved your column this week, pointing out that the woke are not just always right, they're mm. always good. Oh, absolutely. And that's that's where they get their advantage over, over we normals. It's never a matter of, you know, just, uh, just coming up with the right answer. It's that you, the wrong person, are morally bad for opposing them on everything, from okay. from issues of energy supply with gas and so on, to um, you know current debates uh, about race and so on. The the extraordinary thing about gas is that a year or so, even two years ago, like this is a brand new deal, and suddenly gas is the is the most evil and wicked substance. Yeah, you know, they're amazing, these people. It's all right, mate. You can say it. The voice debate fits right into this category. I agree. Because I've been a voice supporter for 10 years, it pains me because that's the, the only way the woke know how to argue it is uh, voice good and if you're against it, bad. And I hope you at yes. least give me credit. I don't run those arguments. But it's, it's, hor yeah. it's horrible to see it happening. And it, it's climate and whether it's feminism or whether it's education... Always, hmm. there were the whole um, the whole uh, transgender thing. You know, if, if you raise a different point of view, then you are morally inferior to these people. That's right. If you just say what everyone believed just a short while ago about about biology, you're the worst person who ever lived <laughs> exactly. and should stand condemned. Now, it's, you it's amazing too. Like the current evil about gas, and one of the things they point <laughs> out, it causes more asthma in children. <laughs> Uh, uh, but if you go to the Asthma Foundation, it tells you how to avoid this terrible thing. Should it yeah. be a concern of yours, open a window or turn on the rain hood. That's it. <laughs> yes, get a get a space heater. I've got you've put us onto this gas thing, and and the and the person quoted in there, Dr. Kate Charlesworth. So we've gone to the video. Let's just share a little bit of her of her <laughs> her commentary on gas. As a doctor, emergency is not a term that I would use lightly, but we now are in a climate emergency situation. This is the greatest intergenerational injustice ever inflicted by one generation of humans upon the next. She's right. Net zero is the greatest case of intergenerational harm inflicted from one bunch to the next. Yeah, if you look at it that way, yes. But why do they always have those eyes, Chris? Honest <laughs> to God. Did she borrow them from, um, from, uh, from another uh, climate change expert? I mean, she's got flannery lamps. It's, <laughs> she's, it's petrifying. She's alarmed. She's alarmed. Cut her some slack. She's alarmed. And, and let's hear some more detail from her about why she's alarmed. OK. Like a lot of Australians, I grew up with gas. You know, that's what we had at home. Um, and it wasn't really probably until a few years ago that as a doctor and as a mother, I started to become concerned about the impacts of gas. Yeah, the impacts of gas, it fries the eggs. It cooks yeah. the bacon. I mean, what does she want? Well, look, I live in a primitive area, as you know, deep in the Wimmera Valley. I'm getting used to the impact of dung. We burn dung here to keep alive. <laughs> we dream. We dream of clean, pure, non-disease, encouraging gas. One day, God willing, one day we'll have it. You're absolutely right. Across the, the, the subcontinent, millions are suffering because they burn dung in their houses instead of gas.